going on here? Well, we're in um, an area where drones aren't allowed. So I asked the guys if they had a really long stick, and of course they have something really good. So we put the 360 camera on the end, and we're gonna try and get some drone-like shots driving around in the dinghy. Sweet. Ah, slow. Yeah, this is good. We definitely had some learning to do when it came to the 360 cam, but in an area where there was no drones allowed, it did give us a chance to get some unique drone-ish like shots. Did your makeshift drone work, senor? I know, we have to look at the footage. <laughs> it's kind of hard because it's like shaky a little bit at the top, so the, the top of the camera is doing a little bit of wobbling, yeah. but okay, we'll see. We'll see, it's all an experiment. Yeah. Today, we are jumping in the water with a highly anticipated creature who lives both on land and in the water. But unlike these sea lions who could be found all the way up and down the coast of the Americas, our goal for today was to check out a creature who lived only in the Galapagos Islands, the marine iguana. 4.5 million years ago, this reptile started venturing into the ocean to eat marine algae, evolving it into a totally unique species from its land cousins. Despite its capability to dive to about 20 meters, it spends most of its life on land, where its black scaly skin provides maximum heat absorption before and after diving for food. But eating underwater means consuming a large amount of salt that can dehydrate them. So they've developed specialized nasal glands to expel this excess mineral. They can also shrink the entire size of their body by up to 20% on years when their food source isn't as prevalent. These wildly adaptable creatures are the only marine iguanas in the entire world, and it was time for us to hop in the water to experience their behavior under the surface. So after our dinghy mission, we headed back to the mothership to get suited up. So today's dive is a little bit colder. We've been diving in like 21 to 25 degrees Celsius. And I think the dives today are gonna be like 18, 19 degrees. So I have a couple extra layers on and I'm wearing a hood today. So I'm wearing a seven millimeter, with two millimeter leggings, this rash guard, and a hood. So you, what's your setup, Brady? Five, five mil on the chest, four on the arms and legs, and then I have five mil vest under it with a five mil hood. And have you so, been staying warm? It's so hot. <laughs> it's nice because I just take my hood off during the dive and I let this fill with water and it's like, <laughs> yeah. That Brady is so hot right now. <laughs> it's so hot. Our dive today was going to be shallow, surgy, and not great visibility. But we were going to do our best to capture the marine iguanas. Surprisingly, the marine iguanas are not scared of humans at all, so we were able to get some pretty unique shots. They spend the morning hours warming themselves on the hot lava rocks. And just like clockwork, at about noon every day, when they are good and toasty, they enter the water, which provides some amazing backlight for filming. Even though their diet consists solely of algae, they are known to live up to 60 years. 
After an hour of being underwater with these crazy creatures, I could see where the inspiration for Godzilla could have come from. When? At the very beginning, I had to take me back. Oh, why? I just had to go really bad. Oh, like you actually had to shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> I thought something scary happened. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> a... I tried too many coffees. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was going to be like, whoa, what an incredible dive, that was insane, I saw so much, the first thing, I am a sh** my pants. I just came back, I just had tea. And I was like, I just need to use And I climbed it and he took me back. That's the story of my dive. That's all I got to say. Yeah, that, that was so cool. That's something that you only see here in the Galapagos, like nowhere else in the world can you see marine iguanas eating underwater. Marine iguanas in general, right? And they're so cool. They go down, and I was with one or two for like five minutes at a time. And they go down and just latch on, and then yeah, the swell and the surge is pushing you around, and like, I had a rock between my legs, and I had one on my arm, and I was trying to film, and I was getting thrown around so much, and they're just like, <laughs> it was really cool. You do a pretty so, good iguana impression. <laughs> there we go. That's it. I saw octopus. I saw turtles. I saw sea lions. I saw tons of marine iguanas. Beautiful school of Dr. Fish. That was incredible. Yeah, I saw a penguin shoot by me super, super fast. I put the camera towards him. I don't know if I got the shot or not, but he was like all of a sudden torpedo pew, penguin coming by. <laughs> so crazy. There's like iguanas and sea lions and penguins and like hogfish and all this stuff. Like you don't even know where to look because there's just so much going on. Hello! Hello! Just wanted to take a quick second to share that we started a sailing school last summer and in that time we've taught about 150 people how to sail which has been so much fun to meet so many of you face to face and spend time on the water together. So we're doing it again this summer in Lake Tahoe. It's a four day consecutive course and we teach on Catalina 22s which are really good to learn on because they're really responsive and you're learning in paradise in Lake Tahoe. Yep. So bookings are available now, so head on over to cruisersacademy.com to snag your spot before it all fills up. We're excited to see some of you out there on the lake this summer, and back to the episode. Welcome to the relaxation station between dives. 
you've ever done any multi-day diving, you know just how tiring it can be. But as we slept and relaxed, the crew was always busy making this ship run. Whether it was preparing the next meal or getting us to the next dive location, there was so, so much going on behind the scenes on the Tiburon Explorer. She's not your average dive boat and is one of the newest in the Galapagos. The construction started in July of 2019 and by March of 2020, she was almost ready to be launched. After a brief lockdown stopping progress due to the pandemic, the crew of 60 got back to work in June of 2020. By August 7th, she was ready to be splashed. Can you believe that a ship of this size was built in just over a year and through a pandemic? The Tiburon Explorer is kitted out with two 475 horsepower MTU Series 60 diesels. These beasts can move her 360 tons at up to 12 knots with no issue. The watermaker on board can produce up to 90 gallons an hour to keep up with the water-hungry guests and all those hot tub soaks after diving. On our sailboats normally try and do 100 to 200 liters a day, which is like 25 gallons, that's maybe. If you want to use 25 gallons, that's a lot. And he said between four and 500 gallons a day are used on board. Smile. Unlimited hot showers. And after the water goes down the drain, it all comes here to the treatment plant, where an anaerobic process breaks down the waste using good bacteria before it's passed over disinfecting tablets and then discharged overboard as little more than water and clean organic waste. But what about filling all those dive tanks? So this is the compressor room. We have two huge Bauer compressors. And this one is a Kaiser. This is the one that pulls oxygen out of the normal air. And it mixes with the other air being compressed in the Bauer compressors. These things are huge. Look at them. You can totally fit one of these in your boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was fascinating to see all the hard work and machinery that goes into making this dive boat run. From 24-hour watches by the crew to servicing generators every four days while underway, this is definitely a well-oiled machine. While all this was happening constantly behind the scenes, most guests were up on the deck, soaking it all in. How's, uh, how's the trip experience been for you, living on board? Oh, it's great. It's, yeah, just everything, everybody's super nice and it's just so easy, you know? You don't have to worry about your equipment, everything's organized, so it's just easy, relaxing. You don't have to think about anything, just show up, jump in the water and watch. Enjoy the movie. <laughs> exactly, it's like a movie, like, you know, just everything is moving in front of you and you're just sitting there. It's, yeah, it's great. We are in the movie Avatar. Yeah. What's that? I'm gonna, we're in the movie Avatar. We just have to get up on top of that cliff <laughs> and our crazy pterodactyl is waiting for us. Pterodactyl! <laughs> As we soaked up the sunshine, the crew is preparing the Tiburon Explorer to motor north overnight to our next dive destination. Unfortunately, Blue and I didn't do such a good job preparing our own cabin because later that night we heard a big crash. I don't know, it's been really calm. Like even when we've been underway, there's been no problem with setting dishes or cameras anywhere. I was even gonna film myself earlier and say, it's so nice, you can just leave anything anywhere. But I just walked into the room and our whole charging station with our cameras and our hard drives and all of our cards that we're emptying is uh, disheveled. Okay. So we need to get it back. Luckily, the computer landed on the chair, or what? Yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. It even is, didn't mess up with it. It's still copying? Yeah. Holy shit. It felt like in the most ideal way. But oh, that could have been a disaster. I know. I walked in and I was like, oh, How did that happen? It hasn't even been rolly. There were a couple that I felt that were like... Okay, well, time to reassess that. Yeah. <laughs> Looking a little 
bread there, senor. Like a lobster? Like a lobster. We are moving, as you can tell from that thing crashing. Yep, we're underway. So, I think it's 160 miles. I'm gonna go check it out right now, but from we're going from uh, basically the top of North Seymour Island. We're going north to Wolf Island. Wolf and Darwin are the two islands way out north. We're actually gonna cross the equator. We're probably crossing the equator right now. I don't know, I'm gonna go and see. It's gonna be really cool though that we're gonna be like underway overnight. We haven't, that hasn't happened in a long time. It's on a sailboat, but it's still cool. And I'm gonna try and go up into the, the bridge deck. As I got to the bridge, there was an incredible feeling of calmness. Whether you're on a small sailboat or a huge ship, being underway at night is always beautiful. Okay, and this is the autopilot? Okay. See? Got the autopilot? Yeah. Wow. There is such a strong sense of responsibility. And even though they navigate this route almost weekly, the captain and crew were adamant about scanning the horizon, looking at the charts and comparing that to current depths, and of course, checking the radar. Anoche nada on radar, see? Anoche? Ah, yeah. Nothing. Anoche? Yeah. No, see. The boat. The boat. The tropico? Si. Poquito. Poquito. Quantos miles? Darwin? Darwin, the. Distance, yeah. Apparently my Spanish is pretty bad these days, so the captain decided to speak to me in English instead. Probably for the better. Do you ever see illegal fishing boats out here? Uh, sometimes, but uh, it's not uh, frequently, I think. Yeah. But especially on the islands of the north, like this, or Genovese Island, sometimes we can see them. Yeah. And do you report them? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So out here stealing the fish we're trying to dive with. Yeah. Okay, muchas gracias. Okay. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, buenas noches. I'll see you in the morning. Okay. okay. The next morning, we woke up to the sight of Wolf Island on the horizon. So, this is what people come to the Galapagos for. This is like, I heard about Wolf and Darwin 13 years ago when I started diving and like, this is it. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about how many sharks are underwater around these islands. And yeah, I can't believe we're actually here. During the next chapter of this journey, we'll be diving in some of the most famous sites on planet Earth.